I would like to talk about the um, critical appraised topic that we published on long-term clinical safety of clindamycin and rifampin combination for the treatment of hydroidonitis. The um, critically appraised topic actually start with this case, um, mostly because there was interfaculty disagreement on how to continue treatment. The patient is a 20-year-old man with severe occlusion trial for more than seven years. He'd failed doxycycline, acetretin, methotrexate, steroid injection, finasteroid, and dapsone, and occasionally was on oral prednisone. He was unwilling to use the prescribed um, Humira. He had had multiple surgery and had a particularly dramatic involvement of the face. He was never completely controlled on any of these medication, and he had reported best results with multiple cause of clindamycin rifampin, which um, lasted up to half a year. At this point, he wanted to continue clindamycin and rifampin. So what is the baseline in terms of academic knowledge? Um, for reasons based on one single um, case report, the standard duration of treatment for clindamycin and rifampin is 10 weeks. The case report was published in 1988 when um, the two authors observed one patient with dissecting cellulitis who was treated with rifam uh, rifampicin and responded or remitted um, after 10 weeks of treatment. He then remained under control. Uh, we contacted the authors for this Critic, uh, cat and they actually confirmed that they would have continued treatment had the patient not responded at 10 weeks. However, the duration was picked up when, for theoretical reasons, clindamycin was added um, in 1999 for the treatment of dissecting cellulitis based on the idea that um, dissecting cellulitis and then later on um, hydroidonitis superativa were related to, or the etiology was related to staphylococcal infection. All of these treatments lasted for 10 weeks, which is now the standard. It is also clinically absolutely clear that some patients would benefit from maintenance therapy with a clindamycin and rifampicin combination. The uh, clindamycin particular um, is causing most of the uh, angst um, of the combination of both drugs. However, um, many physicians are not aware that um, due to uh, Fampin's propensity to induce hepatite, um, hepatic enzymes, the um, particularly P450A, uh, 3A4 enzyme induces blood levels of clindamycin to subtherapeutic levels within two weeks. So the enzyme induction actually leads to an increased metabolism of clindamycin, so little is left. This little, however, is, um, according to some lab studies, sufficient to avoid um, clindamycin, uh, rifampicin um, resistant staphylococcal aureus, which usually develops very, very quickly if monotherapy of rifampicin is used. However, um, even though the um, treatment of this combination is used for osteomyelitis as well, we could not find any long-term studies of the combination, so um, had to develop a methodology to even approach a critically appraised topic. So, um, as, as I mentioned, we, based on no methodological um, models that we could use, we decided to approach the subject as follows. Um, it is first important to note, which, uh, and was quite significant for us, that there's not even a safety signal of a lack of safety. So we did not have any track. 10 weeks are the standards, but no one has ever shown that more than 10 weeks in any way are dangerous. So there was nothing that we could track in terms of adverse events. Mm -hmm. So in order to at least approach the subject, we decided to review the package insert of the US, the summary of product characteristics in the British National Formulary, and Michael Bigby and I uh, together decided um, which aspects to address. In addition to that, we conducted an informal survey of providers and we tried to be international because the concern is actually quite international. So we asked nine American dermatologists, two British dermatologists and one German dermatologist. And that helped us to identify further concerns. 
In order to address each of these questions, we use systematic searches as needed, um, but also went for very basic information, um, like even the package insert if the question was could be answered that way. So in conclusion, we found for rifampicin um, two specific questions, one, the drug-induced liver injury, and two, interstitial nephritis. For clindamycin, we found pseudomembranous colloidus as the main concern um, of, of long-term treatment that the drug is associated with. And based on conversation with dermatologists, the following aspects were added. Experience with long-term treatment is obviously a question that we had to um, systematically address and two drug interactions and enzyme induction of rifampicin. So in terms of drug-induced liver injury of um, rifampicin, we used the Na um, National Institute of Health, um, Health database on liver toxicity, liver tox, which is um, an aggregated database that um, collects information about liver injury for each for um, a huge number of individual drugs and it tends to be incredibly reliably and uh, gets updated very frequently. So the description of rifampicin describes a small increase in liver uh, as liver enzymes on rifampicin that usually does not necessitate drug discontinuation or dose adjustment. Um, you, it is not uncommon to um, observe increased um, bilirubin levels at the beginning of therapy, but those um, sink below normal levels fairly quickly. There are some patients, usually those with cirrhosis, where bilirubin has, uh, can be elevated without signs of a liver injury. It should be noted that um, rifampicin, of course, is used primarily, more at least in, in terms of indication, for the treatment of tuberculosis, which itself is a very dangerous disease. The most severe and uh, in one and ten cases, fatal um, drug-induced liver injury is symptomatic and has been reported. It's associated with jaundice in, in virtually all cases and usually occurs in the first one to six weeks, um, which is quite unlikely. Um, isoniazide, which, isoniazide, which is used concomitantly with rifampicin to treat um, in TB patients, but um, has a later peak of drug-induced liver injury. So our conclusion was that since the risk of liver injury peaks or is virtually only existent in the first six weeks, uh, the, for the, there's no additional danger of treatment um, beyond 10 weeks that we could see from a liver point of view. This is true for a lot of drugs, so it's not particularly surprising or um, even interesting. Uh, liver failure in um, rifampicin has been observed. It's an acute liver failure. It's a clinic apparent. The patient is really sick and they develop interstitial nephritis. The interstitial nephritis has a favorable outcome, so people recover completely. Um, if the drug is discontinuous, it's considered to be a type B hypersensitivity reaction, which is most common with intermittent therapy that has been observed over um, the decades that the drug is available. It's actually part of the package insert and uh, would either be intermittent therapy or when the drug is resumed after interruption, there's no evidence of long-term harm. Again, something that even if we couldn't point, pinpoint exactly to the time point, it would not uh, continuing the drug rather than having a multi multitude of courses would actually prevent um, this event from occurring. So clindamycin's um, most well-known and most significant side effects is um, Clostridium difficile infection or pseudomembranous colitis. It's important to note that um, the, uh, this important side effect or this important problem has to be clinically divided. Um, there is a community-acquired form of Clostridium difficile infection which is not mandatorily um, associated with antibiotic use, and there is obviously the hospital-acquired um, Clostridium difficile infection or um, CDI or pseudomembranous colitis that we see in very sick patients who have been treated with multitude of antibiotics. Those patients have a completely different prognosis. Um, Community-acquired um, C. difficile infection is actually usually treated by um, discontinuation of antibiotics or observation only, so it's not really clinically dramatic. In order to assess the problem, we conducted um, a systematic search for meta-analysis. This is because the a number of papers that um, can be found on C. difficile infection is um, 
huge and meta-analysis would give us the most important and the best information um, for a project like this. So we found um, three qualitative studies, um, three meta-analysis that, that is, um, there is no, all of them didn't specify minimum duration of antibiotic therapy, which means that any patient who even took one day of antibiotic therapy would have been included. All of them concluded that prior antibiotic treatment increased the risk of CD, um, CA, CDI, but it should be noted that um, this can develop a de novo without any antibiotics use. Two of them basically could um, identify an odds ratio um, between 7 and 20 for patients who had used clindamycin. But one um, of these meta-analyses of two European studies did not find any case of clindamycin associated CDI in those um, patient population. So I cannot judge whether this is because the studies don't um, did not uh, Europeans don't use clindamycin, or whether that's because clindamycin these larger population-based studies did not cause um, um, CDI and that was not addressed. Um, so there was another broader meta-analysis that identified antibiotics as the most relevant risk factor, but did not escalate a risk. Uh, another evidence that we have is a footnote in one paper of Dr. Scheinfeld, who reported two cases in eight of um, community-acquired C. difficile and eight undertreated um, hydroadenitis patients, which he treats with long-term clindamycin or rifampin. There were no details on the patient, but even contact with a um, physician remained that these were not particularly memorable because the treatment is discontinuation of drug only. Um, in order to be useful, they actually have to be um, of an adequate size. So um, usually in order to um, observe delayed events with a reasonable frequency, so about uh, anything between 1 and 200 to 1, and, f and in 20, 300 to 600 patients would be needed. Um, if you want to make a safety assessment um, over one year, you have to treat at least 100 um, patients. Um, and this is, would obviously be different if there was any safety signal with, in animal studies, which we don't have. So in terms of drug interaction, which was mentioned as a problem too, rifampicin causes drug interaction. They are hugely problem, can be hugely problematic. Um, the probably most problematic drug intervention in this usually generally healthy population is actually its interaction with um, birth control. And this causes significant problems if the patient becomes pregnant. That um, oral birth control is certainly something that would not be a good combination to rifampicin, or it would certainly not be wise to rely on them. So rifampicin is one of the strongest enzyme inducers now, so it's really an interest, a topic that's of high interest to researcher and has actually been um, evaluated significantly and repeatedly. Um, it does. It's also a very old drug, so the data is strong. It's not stereoselective, as I, uh, meaning it infects both isomers. Um, unlike inhibition, which basically is very quick, it only needs four to five half-lives of any drug, induction takes longer. This is because the enzymes have to be created, and um, for rifampicin, it's particularly fast, probably because of its half-life, but we have no good explanation for it beyond that. Um, it begins within two days. You can see that the enzymes are basically created in the liver, and um, the peak or the, the, stand, the level of enzyme induction max and level of enzyme induction is reached after 9 to 12 days. After the drug is discontinued, it takes another 2 to 4 weeks for this enzyme to disappear again. Again, something that is not a long-term problem. So in summary, um, what we, we think that um, for clinamycin and rifampin, the assessment is the same. That's, that's pretty much true for any drug. Adverse events cluster at the beginning of therapy. Um, the ICH has these guidelines. I mentioned them in above. They are a little bit more and uh, quoted more extent in the um, paper. But um, an, a larger number of patients for a longer period is needed to um, prove safety. But um, safety does not need to be um, for a lot of drugs. It's uh, sufficient to treat uh, to prove safety for only half a year.
um, in order to document long-term safety. The minimum safety uh, duration of rifampicin therapy, um, according to US Patrick insert, is six months, so we can assume long-term safety. A year therapy is not unusual, and the drug has been used for f um, more uh, for 50 years. And um, we could not find any specific issues with the drug. For clindamycin, the data is poorer. Um, clindamycin has been used for acne on average for five months only in, in the only review that we could find. Pseudocystis carini prophylaxis has been used, but also in very small numbers, so no conclusion can be made on that. Long-term treatment of diabetic food, foot is not unusual. Um, but we can, could not find any um, good summary. I think there's even from the ID physician no interest in um, this because they don't feel it's a big problem. And um, therefore, we had to conclude that long term use of the drug is relatively rare and thus the data is sparse, which is um, not a surprise. So, um, the adverse events of clindamycin and rifampicin cluster in the first weeks of treatment. Clindamycin, after that period, is virtually um, not available as a, as a bactericidal drug, um, but we could not identify any evidence or unaddressed concern that long-term treatment of clindamycin and rifampicin induces significant additional risk over short-term treatment, continued the um, treatment in the patient as long as it is tolerated and necessary. Thank you.